Good evening, Sister Brenda. God bless you. Good evening, Pastor Freelo. Miss you. Love you. Hi, Cassie. God bless you. Oh, my heart. God bless you. Sister Dorothy, I love you. Okay, got you, cuz. <laughs> bless you, Pastor Freelo. Bless you. And Lady Freelo, I love you both. God bless you, Sister Nicole. Good to see you tonight. God bless you, Sister Barbara. God bless you, Anthony. Yeah, love you, darling. God bless you, Sister Mildred. Good to see you tonight. Love you. Love you. God bless you, Brother Derek. <laughs> Powerful man of God. God bless you. We'll get started here in a minute. I'll start with prayer in just a few. We'll get a couple more minutes. God bless you, Sister Trishima. Good to see you. Miss you on Sunday. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you. I love you. I love you. And I appreciate you so much. God bless you. Here is holy, and so I just, I, I, it, you know, when we're in, the, in that place of worship and that place of praise, that place is holy. Even wherever you are, you make that holy because you are there because the spirit of the Lord dwells in you. So you make that area, that place, holy. God bless you on tonight. I'm excited about the Word of God. I'm excited about what God is going to do through this Bible study on tonight. Just make sure my volume is good. Sure, the volume is good. All right. All right. God bless you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pray and then I'll just jump right into it. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity on tonight to be in your presence, to be in that holy place because right here is holy. Here is holy, right where we are. 
we have we have gathered tonight on this on this medium of Facebook, dear God, and even as we're here, Lord God, it is holy. Wherever we are, it's holy because the Holy Ghost dwells inside of us. So right here, right here is holy. And we are so grateful tonight for your presence, for your love, for your peace, for your hope that you have given us. We're so grateful tonight to even come before you just to expound on your word and give you your word back and to be able to enjoy it. So Father, we pray tonight that you would have your way, Holy Spirit, leading guide this Bible study on tonight, leading guide us as we go throughout this the, the remainder of this day and into the night and on tomorrow. Father, you be with us and strengthen us and give us just what we need. We know that you are holy. We know that you want us. You said, be ye holy for I am holy. So you want us to walk in holiness and to not put it aside or uh, to not pick it up when we need it, but we have to be holy at all times. So Holy Spirit, have your way on tonight. Speak through me. Use me for your glory, O oh God. Have your way, Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, rest here. Rest here. Anointing, rest here. Flow through these lines in the name of Jesus to every home, Father, to wherever our, where vows that she's driving. Someone may be driving. Someone may be, on, may be on their way home. Someone may be in a business uh, area are doing something that they need to take care of. So Father, whatever, wherever we are, we know that this place is holy. Where we are, it is holy. It is holy. So we thank you, Lord God, for the, for your move, for your hand and there, God, for all that you have for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you on tonight. I am just so excited about the word of God. I'm excited because God's word is so true. And it always, what I love about it is it pricks the heart and then it restores us and it directs us in the path that we need to go. And um, I was, as I was reading, I was like, Lord, there's just so many things, you know, I, I just feel like the word of God is just such a treasure. And so as I take this treasure and I read it and I begin to understand what he's saying, I just get excited. So just bear with me, you know, I, I get excited about the word. And so I'm going to share Luke 17 verses 1 through 10 with you. But what I love about this is because it, Jesus is teaching the disciples. And as I thought about it, I related it to myself as a parent. When you have those teachable moments when you're with your children, or even as a teacher, when you have a teachable moment, what you do, you take advantage of that and you begin to teach them something that isn't even a part of the lesson, but it's something that will benefit them. And so it's the same thing happens with us as parents and that we, we will give them that extra, you know, here, take this, take this. I want you to use it. I want you to abide by it. So that's what God did with me on this morning in his word. So I'm going to start. I'm going to, first I'm going to read it in the King James version and then I will wrap it up in the Passion translation. And this is what it says. It says, "Then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. And we know that offenses come, they come on our jobs, they come through our family members, they come, you know, sometimes in the church. Offenses come, but the scripture said, woe unto him through whom they come. Verse two says, it were better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. And these little ones are us. We are God's children. And he doesn't want anyone to offend us. And it says, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And so I, I, I love this. And you're going to really love this in the passion, Mama Dot. Because what it's saying is, if someone is taking an offense, you go ahead and you restore that person. You tell them what they have done. And then and when they say, forgive me, you have to forgive them. And if he trespassed against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So we have to have a forgiving heart. That's all a part of love. That's all a part of serving God. We have to have a heart to forgive. And what I love about this, he's talking about one thing, but then he goes and he tells them about being able to forgive. And verse 5 says, and his apostles said unto him, Lord, increase our faith. 
So in other words, they were saying, oh my goodness, this is a hard thing, you know. Someone's going to, first of all, you said offenses are going to come. And then when the offenses come, then you're saying if they repent, they say, I'm sorry, we got to forgive them. So, you know, it's like, this is hard, Father. I, we need you to increase our faith in order for us to be able to handle this. But look what he says. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. So he's letting them know the power of having faith. You don't need a whole lot of faith. You just need a little faith in order to move God. You need a little faith in order to and able to, uh, even with the forgiveness, you need a, just a little bit of faith to know that, listen, I know how to forgive. I know how to move on. I know how to reprove. I know how to rebuke. I know how to love. And so it doesn't take a whole lot, but he's letting them know. He said, all you need is a little bit of faith. And, to, and he told them, he said, if you just said it, boom, it's gone. Okay. And so then it goes on verse seven. It says, but which of you having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle shall say unto him by and by when he is come from the field go and sit down to meet and will not rather say unto him make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and after what thou shalt eat and drink. So he's reminding us we are servants of God and we have a job to do. We have work to do for the kingdom. And so the, it goes on and it says, does he thank the servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. And as I read this, in the, as I was reading it, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I've got to see what the passion says. Because what this part of the scripture is saying is that we have a duty to do. We have a job to do. And in doing that job, do we want to say, um, you know, we, we, a lot of times people want accolades. They want you to say, oh, you didn't call my name or you didn't mention me or you didn't say this or you didn't say that. I need to be, I need to be uh, rewarded because of what I said. But look what it says. No, as you do what you're supposed to do because we are servants of God. And because we are servants of God, the, the, it's just a pleasure to be able to serve. It is to me, you know, I was thinking about last night and, and I was like, uh, it, it is a pleasure for me to be able to, to pray. It's a pleasure for me to be able to, to speak a word into someone's life. It's a pleasure for me to be able to speak the word of God and see what his word is saying. That is my duty. You know, the Bible said, what is the whole duty of man? This is a part of the duty that God has called us to. And we don't have to have someone come along and say, good job. Oh, I, I like what you did. Oh, I, I, you know, I appreciate all that you do. If they don't say anything, you have done what God has commanded you to do. I like how you prayed with so-and-so. I like how you took, no, we don't need that. Because guess what? We are doing the work of the Lord. And if we are doing the work of the Lord, we've already received our reward. Because what we're doing, we're doing kingdom work. And nobody has to come and pat you on the back. No one has to come to you and say, good job. No one has to say anything. Because this is what we are supposed to do. And so as I was, you know, going through this and I was thinking about, uh, about Jesus. And I was like, Lord, how does this even line up? You know, and I, I was like, how, how, how can I make this all line up? Because as we read, a lot of times when we're reading, we're looking for that connection. How does this scripture connect to this one? But sometimes when Jesus says, I just love it. I thought about, you know, what he, he said, here, let me give you this. You know, while I'm telling you this and I'm correcting you on this, let me give you this little nugget. Let me give you this little extra. I want to give you an extra. And so I was thinking about myself, you know, as mommy. And there were times when, you know, I would sit down with my children and we would have these conversations. And so then I would like throw something in. Okay, this is, 
You're not keeping your room clean. You're not doing this. I need the trash put out. I need this. And oh, by the way, let me give you this. And so I thought about that as a parent. We always give that extra little nugget, that extra little piece, you know. And so that's what it reminded me of. But Jesus, he was saying, so he was giving, let me give you this. Let me give you this to chew on. I want you to, you know, to be able to use this. Because a lot of times when we're teaching our children, when we're reproving them, or even, you know, whatever work we're doing, We'll, we'll add a little extra just in case, you know. So I just thank God for, for the word and what it says. So the first part of the scripture says, it talks about offenses. It says offenses will come. They will come. We know that we're going to be offended. So don't think that it's strange. Don't get don't get all in an uproar. Don't get upset. Offenses will come. But we have to know how to handle it. And God even says, Jesus, as Jesus was speaking to the disciples, he said, look, it's going to happen. People are going to offend you. Your feelings are going to get hurt. You know, you're going to be really hurt. You're going to, things are going to happen. You might get hurt in your marriage. You might get hurt in your relationships on your job. You might get hurt in your relationships at church. You might get hurt wherever you go. Somebody might offend you just driving and doing certain things. Offenses are going to come. But he's saying to them, you know, but woe through whom those offenses come. People are going to offend you. But, you know, I'm going to deal with that is what he's saying. I'm going to deal with that. So don't worry. Don't stress over that. He is going to deal with it. So as I think about that, you know, I get really excited because Jesus is doing what he, he is telling his disciples what he needs to tell them. Then after he tells them about, you know, about being offended, he goes and he tells them about being forgiving. We have got to forgive. You know what? The one thing that I had to learn I had to forgive some people along the way in my journey. I couldn't keep holding on to things. I couldn't allow those things to take preeminence over me. You know, even on my job and when, when the school year first started, before it started, the uh, principal came to me and he said, I want you to, to lead this team into the direction that it should go. I, I know that you have the skill set to do it. I know that you will be able to do it. And so as time progressed, uh, I hadn't heard anything from him. He didn't say anything to me. And I, I was like, okay, so what's going on? And then uh, the assistant principal came to me also. And she said, I know that you're capable of doing what you need to do as a leader for this group. And so uh, I talked to one of the girls and she said, oh, he told me he wanted me to be the team lead. And so I was like, okay. So I didn't hear anything from him. So I didn't press it. So she ran down to the office and she asked him about it. And he said, yes. Uh, he told her, yes, go ahead and be the team lead. And so at first I was offended. I'm going to be honest with you. I was offended because I had all these plans in my head, things that I wanted to do for the team, just all of the stuff that I was excited about doing. But, you know, I was offended. But what God said, you weren't ready to do this right here because you're moving from fifth grade back to first grade and the challenges that you have ahead of you, you won't be able to handle that. And so as I look at it, I was like, one day I was at school, I said, Father, I thank you because it really requires a lot. It requires a lot. And this young lady has no children. She has no husband. It's just her. And she's able to get done what she needs to get done. And so I was grateful to God because he, he it was like, you're, you know, do what you have to do. Do it behind the scenes. So what I did, I put a whole bunch of things together for her so that she could use it at the beginning of the year to make sure all of that stuff was in place. Everything that I had intended to do, I shared it with her and I made sure that the team had it and I did that portion. And so the rest of it, I just left it to her. And I thank God because he knew better than I knew. And so like I'm saying, offenses will come. And when those offenses come, sometimes we don't understand but God knows what's best for us. Okay, and so I just want to, and so I immediately, you know what I did? I said, okay, moving on. And that's what we have to do. Forgive and move on. Keep pressing and move on. We cannot stay there. As pastor reminds us all the time, don't get stuck in the moment. We don't want to stay right there. If we stay right there, we will never grow. We will never be able to process. What if I would have held that in my heart? Because there was a, someone who I talked to was very offended because that she was supposed to be team lead of another group and they did not do it. And she's just had struggle after struggle after struggle. But what I realized, what God has for me is for me. And so I cannot, 
I'm doing me. What you know what shows up is showing up in my baby's grades. It's showing up in their growth, their growth in reading, their growth in math. It's showing up in their growth. So that's all that matters. Because at the end of the day, that's what I want. I want to move my children. I'm not worried about all that other stuff. I want to do what is asked of me and I want to move my baby. So regardless of what, we have to learn to forgive and move on. And that is what he said to the disciples. And this last part, the service part, it just, when I read it in the Passion, I was like, I started to weep because it was reminding me. I said, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to pray with anybody. Thank you for the opportunity that you give me even to be able to do Bible study. Thank you because it's a part of the service that I have to do. It's a part of the service, a part of the work of the kingdom. And so I began to thank God. And I, as I was laying there crying, I was like, Lord, I'm so grateful that you love me so much that you trust me to serve. And so that is what I just want to remind you tonight. Know who you are. Know where you are and be grateful. Nobody has to come and say all of the great things that you want to hear. No one has to come and even mention your name, but you know what you've done. And guess who knows? God knows. He knows everything that you've done. He knows how you're working and he knows what you're doing. So be, be in that moment, be in that moment to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you. So here we go. And my favorite part, Sister Dorothy, Sister Dot, I know you're going to love this. And this is what it says. One day, Jesus taught his disciples this. Betrayals are inevitable, but great devastation will come to the one guilty of betraying others. It would be better for him to have a heavy boulder tied around his neck and he be hurled into the deepest sea than to face the punishment of betraying one of my dear ones. And I just want to remind you, in our lives, people have done a lot of things to us. They have offended us. They have betrayed us. They have, you know, they've broken trust. They've broken truths. If you enter into some contracts, people have broken contracts and they don't even realize what they've done. But look what the Bible said, that it was better that a boulder was tied around their neck and they were hurled into the deepest sea than to face the punishment of betraying you, Brenda. Hallelujah, of betraying you, Pastor McDuffie, of betraying you, Pastor Freelo. Look what will happen. It was better for them to even go through that than to face what they're going to face with God because they betrayed you, because they went behind your back and they did something Val, they shouldn't have done. They said something, Sister Mildred, that they should not have said. And the Bible says what is going to happen to them is he said it would be better for them. So can you imagine something worse than having to drown, worse than fighting for air? No, we don't even want to begin to think about that. But great devastation will come to the one guilty of betraying others. And it goes on and it says, so be alert to your brother's condition. And if you see him going the wrong direction, Cry out and correct him. It is our responsibility. If you see your brother saying something he shouldn't say, if you see your brother doing something he should not do, living a way that he shouldn't do, it is our responsibility to correct them. It is our responsibility to be that sound, that part of God in their ear, giving them the word of God, reminding them, listen, the direction that you're taking is not a good direction. I like what Pastor says. He says, slow down young girl. You know, he began to say, you know, he's, rem he's reminding the, the, you know, the youth, he's reminding, you know, older people, look, slow down. Don't be an old fool. I remember he said something one day and it blew my mind, but it's, it, I'm telling you, it's, in other words, it's like, slow down. You know, you have to listen. So sometimes people will correct us. And when they correct us, and we have to correct others. So when, when we're corrected, it's done in love. And if it's not done in love, receive it anyway and keep on going because you cannot hold that against them. The Bible said, forgive them and move on. And it goes on and it says, if, if there is true repentance on his part, 
forgive him. So when someone tells you, I'm sorry, and they really mean it, if they tell you, I'm sorry that I offended you, I'm sorry that I hurt you, I'm sorry that I, I said these things, I'm sorry that I pulled you down, I'm sorry that I used you, forgive them is what the Bible says. Forgive them. If they are really sorrowful, forgive them. No matter how many times in one day your brother sins against you and says, I'm sorry, I'm changing, forgive me. You need to forgive him each and every time. So, you know, we are human. So if somebody, you know, what's that saying? Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, no, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You know, a lot of times we live by that. Oh, I'm not, I'm not going down that road again. And you're not going to fool me this time. You're not dragging me in this. But look what it says. If they come to you and they say, I'm sorry. And then they go back and they do it again. I'm sorry. It is our responsibility to forgive them. And so if we have to live and abide by that, it says every time they come to us, Upon hearing this, the apostle said to Jesus, Lord, you must increase our measure of faith. In other words, look, I don't have enough to stand on this. I, is my faith strong enough where I can take this abuse? Is my faith strong enough where I can deal with somebody abusing me and hurting me and then saying they're sorry, using me and misusing me and then saying they're sorry? Yes, it is your responsibility to forgive. So, six says, Jesus responded, if you have even the smallest measure of authentic faith, it would be powerful enough to say to this large tree, my faith will pull you up by the roots and throw you into the sea, and it will respond to your faith and obey you. So in other words, in order to live with our brothers, in order to live with those who offend us, in, law, in order to live with those who use us and, and, and don't treat us right. We have to forgive and we have enough faith. We have enough faith. He's given us enough faith. He's given us enough faith to be able to handle it. He's given us enough faith to be able to believe. And then guess what? You can tell that thing, hey, go, because of the faith that you have inside of you. And that person can be changed and that person can be healed and that person can be delivered because what you say, it will respond. If your faith is where it needs to be, it will respond to what you are saying. Jesus continued, after a servant has finished his work in the field or with the livestock, he doesn't immediately sit down to relax and eat. No. A true servant prepares the food for his master and makes sure his master is served his meal before he sits down to eat his own. And you know what? This is so, you know what? As you think about, you know, I, I think about my job. My job does not end. So many, I, I hear so many of the, the young ladies, they say, my job, three, three, uh, 25, I'm off the clock. My job ends. I'll pick it back up in the morning. But my job doesn't end that at that time because I bring work home. I'm going to read. I'm going to look over this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to prepare. You know, it would be easy to just say I'm done. But look what it reminds the servant. After you've done the work and even in the church, after you've done the work that you were supposed to do, after you have prepared the way, after you have opened these doors, after you've done all of these things, and you said, okay, I went to the church and, and I, I, I prepared the sanctuary and then I cleaned and then I did this and then I did that. Okay, that's your job. That's what you're doing. And no, don't, oh, I want somebody to say, oh, look what she's doing. No, I want to go and sit down. No, finish doing what you have to do. And once you finish, and I, I just love this part. He says, you're going, they're going to, as a true servant, it's going to make sure that everything is taken care of for his master. So what God is saying, all of the work that I've given you to do, can make sure, make sure that you've taken care of everything and take care of the work and do what you are supposed to do. Then you sit down and listen to this. Does the true servant expect to be thanked for doing what is required of him? Do you really if you are a servant and we are servants in the kingdom of God, 
There's some people who fix bags and hand out to the homeless. There's some people who who, who uh, drive by and bring water. I was watching on tele uh, uh, on on YouTube the other other day, and there was a young man, and he had gone to Popeyes and he bought all of these sandwiches and he had all of these shoes in his car. And as the people came up, homeless people came up. He was giving them food. He was giving them water. He was asking them what size shoes you wear. And he was giving them tennis shoes. And you know what? As I looked at that, that is the work that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to make sure the homeless is taken care of. We're supposed to make sure that everything is done. That is a part of our job. Are we going to sit back and wait? No, we're not going to sit back and take our ease in Zion. There's more work to be done. And so what I love about this is we have to keep doing what is required of us. And if no one ever says thank you, and if no one ever pats you on your back, no one ever says good job, I appreciate what you did. So what? God saw everything you did. He saw your heart when you did it. He saw the intent of your heart. He saw what you, if you really meant to do it. He saw if you did it out to be seen. He saw if you did it out of love. He saw, he sees every single thing we do. And so we don't have to worry about being thanked. That servant could not, he didn't, he, he wasn't waiting on his master to say thank you. So learn this lesson after doing all that is commanded of you. Simply say, we are mere servants, deserving of, we are mere servants, undeserving of special praise. For we are just doing what is expected of us and fulfilling our duty. What is your duty? What is your duty? What is your duty? We are fulfilling our duty when we do these things, when we feed the homeless, when we stop and we give somebody a meal, when we stop and we, we give somebody some change, when we stop and we make sure that things are done in the church, when we stop and we make sure that our brother and our sister who may be fallen, it is our duty. They don't even have to say thank you. They don't have to, but God knows and he sees what you have done. And if we don't even, no one has to ever say thank you. I know it feels good when people say thank you. I know it feels good when people say, I appreciate what you've done. God is going to allow someone to come to see what you're doing. God is going to allow someone to give you, if you to, give, to say something about what you have done. But what I love about this is that, we are undeserving of special praise for we are just doing what is expected of us and fulfilling our duties. Let's do the work of the Lord. Let's have our faith. Remember to keep your faith grounded in knowing I'm able to forgive. I'm able to love. I'm able to press through this thing. And as we go through this, service is the word that I want to say. It is our job to serve the kingdom. I, I like when Jesus told the he told his uh, he told the apostles he said no one can say they left father mother brother sister for my sake. In, in other words, in saying we left it all for naught. He was saying there is a reward with what you did. There's a reward after this. There is a reward. There is a reward out because of what you did. Don't think that you will not be paid back. Don't think that God does not see. Don't think that he does not hear. How, who opened that door for you to get another house? Who opened that door for you to start that business? You did some stuff and some people betrayed you. You did some things and people hurt you. You did some things and people lied on you. They scandalized your name. But guess what? God keeps blessing you over and over and over again. He keeps opening doors over and over again. He keeps your children over and over again. He protects them over and over again. He protects us over and over again. He gives us favor with man. He takes a king's heart and he turns it in our favor. Because what? We are doing what is expected of us. And if nobody says thank you, and if nobody says you did an awesome job, God will reward you. And as you can see, he is rewarding you day by day in all of the things that we and all of the things that we've gone through and all of the things that we see. So I just get I'm just so excited because God's word is true. His word is true. 
And if we do what we are supposed to do according to what God is saying, we will be rewarded. So we are just servants. We are doing the work of the Lord. And I just want to remind you, continue to serve. Don't allow anybody or anything to stop you from serving. Don't allow people. Don't allow situations. Don't allow time. Because a lot of times we will allow time. We, you know, I don't have no time for this. I don't have no time for that. Yes, you do. Take out that time. Take out the time that you need in order to meet the needs of others. Take out the time to do the work that God has commanded you to do. So I, I know as we think about the work that we have to do, and we really look at, at this work, the work sometimes, it seems like it's great. It seems like it's a lot of work. It's a lot that we have to do. But I'm going to tell you something. It's going to all work out for your good. It's going to all work out for your good. You know, I, I, I just, as I think about, you know, how we work in the kingdom and how I just thank God for the palace of praise and how God has knitted us together and how we, we, we have one another's backs and, and we do what we're supposed to do and we, we hold up one another and we encourage one another and we love on one another, you know, and so that is what God is expecting of us. That faith that we have in order to move. We are moving mountains. <laughs> we are changing things. We are world movers and shakers because of what we are doing for the kingdom. We're doing it through prayer. Who, you know, as I think about this ministry, six days a week, there's a prayer line. It starts at six o'clock. Sometimes they don't get off of there until 10. I know because I used to be on there. There was one day I think we might have gotten off at about 11, close to 12 because the power and the spirit of the Lord was moving. And as the, the ministers were ministering to the people and praying for the people, things began to happen. Deliverances were happening, you know, in salvation and in peace. And God was opening doors and he was changing some things because of what? Because of the service. And so even as I think about the priceless woman and, and what we just, the, the, the service that we just had, and I love, you know what I really love? I love every aspect of it, but I, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to be truthful. I love the giveaways, okay? Because I like to see the faces of the people. I love the word. Don't get me wrong. I love the word. I love how God is moving. And I like how he, he showed us this last time, you know, he showed us who we were. And I just love the way the session went. It was so beautiful. And I remember someone was saying, can we have these answers? They wanted like an open forum. And in a way, it was kind of an open forum. She did such a beautiful job and the people were able to respond. But look what happened. As I thought about definitely the one at, at Christmas, the, you know, oh my God, those people, how they began to give and they began to sow. And uh, sister, uh, I think it was, um, I don't know if it was Sister Flo or, or Sister Cassandra, they said how this mother and daughter had come in and my, it was one of the people that Monty, uh, uh, it was the team that Monty had interviewed and she was asking them about it and she said she looked at the daughter's face and the daughter's face was like why am I here I don't want to be here you know I'm just coming here because my mom's making me come and she went in and she won the extra hundred dollars that pastor gave away and at the end she was so excited she was just so overjoyed and you know what it really blessed me because a lot of times we don't know what a person is standing in need of. We don't know what they need. Even that baby, I had just heard that child talking to Misi. And Misi said, are you going to be able to go home, uh, you know, uh, for Mardi Gras? And she said, no. She said, you know, my finances are a little funny. I had taken a trip and then I did something else. And when she won the purse, I was like, what? <laughs> you know, we never know what someone is in need of. And so I was just so excited because that is a part of outreach. That is a part of service. And that is what we're supposed to be doing. So I'm just mentioning some of the works that we do in the church. And I thank God for the platform of Thursday prayer. And I can't wait for school to end <laughs> so that I can be on noon day prayer. Sometimes I sneak and put my head, my earphones on and listen, but not <laughs> if I have to think about when it's happening or if I hear the ding, I will listen and walk around and teach. And my kids are doing like an independent practice. So, but I, I'm just telling you that noonday prayer on Thursdays and Bible study, the word coming from our pastor, you know, Sister Brenda, Brother Derek, just coming forward, coming forward, Pastor 
preload, coming for the word of God, just coming and, and, and ministering to our hearts, ministering to our souls, and touching us right where we need. This is all a part of the service. It's all a part of the service. You know, Sister Valerie getting there early on, sat on Saturday mornings, opening up the church like Pastor Freelo used to do, being there. She said, just in case somebody comes, she said, I told the Lord I want to be on time. I want to be on time just in case. And sometimes it's just us. But still, I love her tenacity because this is not just about her. This is kingdom work, trying to make sure that someone else is fed, someone else is filled. And then the youth, seeing the youth go forth. And it's not just, I mean, on fourth Sunday, yes, I, I, my mind was blown. I'm going to be honest with you. My mind was blown when I heard, when I heard Sir William, you know, because, you know, it, it just, because I've heard him speak before and he says very little. And when he got up there, I was like, what? <laughs> Oh, that's in that child. And I was like, of course it's in that child because look who his parents are. And so, you know, it just blessed me to see what God is doing. It, it blesses me daily. So this is a part of that service. This is a part of the work that God has called us to. Even children's church, how Val will come and she'll share what they're doing. Mani will share with me what she's doing with her children. So this is a part of the work. So if nobody says thank you, if nobody pats you on your back, you know you're good because God sees and he knows everything that you're doing. So every part of the ministry and even as the men are going to begin to do what they have to do, we are excited that praise team, oh my God, blows your mind every Sunday, all in the work of the kingdom, doing what you're supposed to do on your post. Nobody comes up to you and say, great job, or I like that song. Sometimes they might, sometimes they won't. But you know what you look at? You look out in the audience and you see people weeping and you see people lifting their hands and praising God and you see people worshiping God and you see people on their knees because that the band and the praise team has brought us right to that point. And I would be, oh, I miss if I did not mention the beautiful job, part of the service that the kitchen staff does and a part of the service that Mama Dot and Sister Katie do. I tell you what, I have a great respect for y'all. I tell you what I told somebody. I said, I don't know if I'm made to be an usher. I had to take my shoes off. And Mama Dot, I know you never take your shoes off. But I said, whoo, that's a hard thing to do. But I was grateful for the opportunity to do it because Pastor wanted us posted in, in various places to do the work. And it was beautiful. And even how everything, how the men worked outside, how the young people worked with the children, how everything all came together because it's a part of the service. It's a part of what God has called us to. So I just want to, I'm getting ready to close, but as I close, I just hope that you have been blessed by this. I just hope that this has touched you in some way. It's, and I'm going to read uh, 9 and 10. Does the true servant expect to be thanked for doing what is required of him? No, we don't expect anybody to thank us because this is a part of the work of the ministry. We are servants. We are servants. And we're supposed to do the work of the Lord. So learn this lesson. After doing all that is commanded of you, simply say, we are mere servants, undeserving of special praise. For we are just doing what is expected of us and fulfilling our duties. Amen. How many of you are fulfilling your duty and doing what God said? Do it anyway. Press anyway. Do it. I don't care what happens. There is a reward. And there's a great reward. There's a great reward for doing the work of the Lord, for restoring a brother, for forgiving a sister. There is a great work in doing what God has commanded, to meeting the needs of others. There is a great reward in doing this work. So I just thank God for being able to be on the line tonight, for being able to share with you, for being able to, you know, just give you the word. So if you get a chance, when you get a chance, I want you to read, you know, in your own time of study, Luke 17, verses 1 through 10, and just see how Jesus broke that word down and see what he's reminding us of. We are just mere servants. 
That's what we are. We've been called to serve. And let me tell you something. When you know how to serve, you know how to be a leader. You have to know how to serve in order to lead. Because if you don't know how to serve, you will not be an effective leader. You will not. Because it takes some breaking down. It takes some going through. It takes some things to happen to show you all you're doing is the work of the Lord. And so I just think, not that it's all that you do, and I don't want it to seem like it's something small because this work is great. It is really great. But I just want to encourage you tonight to know that God sees and he knows if nobody else says anything, you're just doing what God has commanded you to do. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Lord God, as we come out and we close this Bible study, I pray that something was said in order to prick, to prick the hearts of your children. Oh God, it has pricked me. You reminded me this morning that you it's, it's a privilege for you to come before. It's just a privilege. It's a part of your job, Lisa. It's a part of what you're supposed to do for the kingdom. If I called you teacher, you teach. Who oh God, if I called you leader, you lead. Regardless of what he has called us, if he has called us servant, we serve. We're all servants. Let me get that straight. We are all servants, so we all have to serve. But with other capacity, if he's called you to administer, administer. Do your administration according to what he says to do, not according to what we want to do. I don't care what he's called you to do. Do the work. So, Father God, as we come tonight, we thank you for every opportunity you give us to serve. Whether it's cleaning, whether it's feeding, whether it's helping, whether it's decorating, whether it's, if it, whether it's restoring, whatever it is. Lord God, we are grateful for every opportunity to serve your people. And we pray tonight in the name of Jesus that your will will be done in us. We pray that you get the glory out of everything that we do. We don't want the glory. All glory and honor belongs to you. So, Father, anybody who thinks they're going to be glorified, Father, we rebuke that now in the name of Jesus. You get the glory. You get the glory out of the work. You get the glory out of the priceless women. You get the glory out of, out of Bible study. You get the glory out of our services. You get the glory, dear Lord, out of the praise and the worship. You get the glory, dear God, out of all the work that we do. You get the glory, Lord God. We lift you up. We magnify you. We glorify you. And we love you for who you are. You get the glory out of the lives of the children, the lives of the babes, dear God, even though as they worship and with flags. And as they worship and dance, God, you get the glory. All of it, all of it is just a part of the service that you have commanded and you have called us to do. That is a service to be able to, to, to worship, to be able to fight in the spirit with, with, with the flags, to be able to, when I say fight, I'm talking about fight, fight against spirits and, and things that will try to come against the service, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you for every opportunity that you give us to serve in whatever capacity. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that your will will be done continuously in us. Father, bless, bless. Bless, Father, even those, as I think about Elder Brenda every Sunday, she, she does, I, I just see her working in so many areas, dear Lord, and she does not mind. She does the work and she does not complain. She gets the work done. Bless her because of what she has put her hands to do. There's a scripture that says, whatever your hands find to do, to do it. So, Father, I thank you because she does just that. That is how she abides. That is what she lives by. Bless her just because she has put her hands to the plow and she will not look back. So, Father, we pray tonight in the name of Jesus that your will will be done in every member of the prices of praise. And as Pastor says, past, present, and future members God, your will be done in our lives. Father, as we work this work, as we do what you commanded us to do, as we live the life, dear God, before others, have your way in us and through us in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray.
Even as Sister Valerie makes that petition every Sunday, we pray even now, I want you to begin to think about who sits next to you or who sat across from you or someone you saw. Call that name out right now. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus for my sisters and my brothers. I pray now for E. I pray that your will be done in this life. I pray for Sister Felicia that your will will be done in her life. I pray, dear God, that you will move in the lives, dear God, of your people. Sister uh, and Jackie, dear God, that your will will be done in their lives, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And you will do just what you have to do in them and through them. And Father, even as they have dedicated their lives to serve you, Lord God, as they have dedicated their lives to serve you, Lord, please, we thank you for moving for them and for giving them just what they stand in need of in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our pastor who is so wonderful because he loves your people. He is a pastor after your own heart. You, you said, I have passed. I've chosen pastors. And Father, even as you have made him a sh the shepherd and as he is leading us and guiding us in the direction that we will go, Father, we pray over him that every business venture, every person that he comes in contact with, even the ministry at the funeral home, dear God, that you will continue to use him, continue Continue to strengthen him. Continue, dear God, in the name of Jesus, to keep his babies, to keep Sir William, to keep charity, to keep charisma, Father, in all that they do, even as he's out, as he has probably found the apartment, Lord God, let it be a good location. Let it be a safe location. Father, let it have all the things that she needs in order to be able to just go in. And Father, let everything work out for her good. And even while she's there, I'm asking you, Father, to put her around the right people. Father, I'm asking you for the right neighbors. Oh God, for the right neighbors all around that baby, for the right neighbors in that apartment complex, neighbors who are loving, neighbors who are kind, neighbors, dear God, who are thoughtful, neighbors who are holy, neighbors who will pray for her, neighbors who she can pray for, neighbors who she can minister to. Father, put her in the right place so that the ministry that you have placed inside of her, it will begin to operate and she will begin to move in the capacity that you have called her to in the name of Jesus. And even as the other baby will be graduating this spring, God, I thank you for every door that you have already opened for her. I thank you for the next venture. If she's going to go and get her master's, whatever she, she's going to law school, whatever it is that she has purposed in her heart to do, Father, we thank you for it all working out for her good in the name of Jesus. And as Sir William gets his class ring, <laughs> as he gets his class ring this spring, dear God, for his senior year, Lord, open every door that you have to open for him. Keep him in perfect peace and keep him surrounded by the right circle of people. Father, I pray for these babies, for their circle of people, that if there's anybody who means them ill will, anybody who is hateful, anybody who wants to hurt them, Father, get those friends out of the way because they're not real friends. Move them out of the way and put the right circle of people around them so that they can do what you have commanded them to do, so that they can live the life that you have commanded them to live, so that they, they can be the, the, the he will be, William, Sir William will be the man and they will be the women that you have called them to a higher calling in you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for every one of my brothers and sisters on this line. I pray a special prayer for Pastor Freelo as you are healing his body, as you are restoring him, as you are giving him optimum health, as you are doing only what you can do, God. Only what you can do. You are doing it just for him because you love him, because of his service, dear God. Father, you blessed Pastor Freelo just because of the service, the years of service. Father, getting up at 6 o'clock, going to the church, praying, open the door, cleaning up. Father, just because, pour him out a blessing <laughs> that he won't have room to receive in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for, for, for Sister Freelo. I thank you for Lady Freelo, for you being with her and strengthening her and using her for your glory. And Father, I even thank you for Sister Leslie. I'm praying God for just... I know that I could, as I saw on Sunday, I know she had that hip replacement surgery. But Father, I'm asking you for strength, like strength, like only you can give. Strength flowing through her body, like only you can. Do it, God. 
strengthen her and use her for your glory in the ministry. Use Pastor Jackson and Pastor CJ. Use them and Sister T Pastor Tawana. Use them. Use them for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, even as I get ready to close, I pray for the young people. Lord God, someone made it known to me about the young people and all of the things that they're going against and how they're, the, this stuff that's going on with marijuana. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that you would take the very desire and taste for marijuana out of the mouths of the young people. Father, I pray for their safety. I pray for their hearts, their minds, their souls. I pray, dear Lord, that you will protect them and keep them from everything that is not like you. I pray for Aiden, even as he's graduating. Lord God, have your way in his life. Cover him and keep him in perfect peace. And Lord, I don't want to miss anybody. So I just pray for everyone who is uh, who's, who's dialed in on tonight. And I pray for everyone that is attached to us in any way that you will bless them and you will keep us all in perfect peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. I'm sorry I went a little long. I didn't really want to do that, but I just wanted to remind you on tonight that there are four ways to give. Sister Valerie might be there where she could put them up for you. Elder B, you gave it to me and I lost my thing. I should have taken a picture of it. But the four ways to give of someone, Sister Trina, if you're on. God bless you, Sister Sophia. God bless you. Uh, go ahead and put up the four ways to give. The one that I know is uh, through Cash App, Dollar Sign, Pop Palace Nation. If you want to give at this time uh, to, to the Palace of Praise, if you want to sow into the ministry, that's an option. God bless you. God bless you. And I just thank God for here is holy. Here is holy. Right here, right now is holy. And so I am just so grateful to God for being able to be with you on tonight. And so I just want to go ahead and close with that because right here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Brenda. God bless you, Sister Sophia. Pastor Freela, I love, love, love you. God bless you, Sister Dorothy. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you all tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here. Here is holy. Right here, right now, is holy. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right here. Right here. It's holy in your home. Hallelujah. It's holy in your car. It's holy on your job. Right here. Right here is holy. Here is holy. Here is holy. Here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I love you. Have a beautiful night's rest. Sleep well, my brothers. Sleep well, my sisters. And know that God is moving. He's moving. He's moving. And he has you anchored in him because right here is holy. Right where you are in your home, when you walk out that door, holy, holy. Because you've taken on holiness. You put it on. And you are a servant of the true and living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Be back here on tomorrow for Noonday Prayer. Noonday Prayer. Noonday Prayer. Under the leadership of Pastor Freelo. Noonday Prayer. Noonday Prayer. Ready your heart to receive a word from the Lord in prayer, in scripture, and in prayer. God bless you. I love you. And we'll be back with you on tomorrow at noon.